Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the review session for the first one hour exam that is scheduled for Tuesday, September 18. For today's session, we are going to use the uh, a previous exam as for this review session. So this exam is, is uh, on your screen at this moment. So what I want you guys to do, uh, give me th those questions that you would like us to go through uh, from this uh, previous exam. But before you do that, let me go ahead and acknowledge uh, those of you who are already with us today. I see Brianna Neal, Danica Little, Glenn Gladney, Hilton Osana, okay. uh, Fred Woods, Agnes Edukere, Eja Walton, Brianna Davis, Glenn Gladney, Alicia McKenzie, Ines Kifendo, Jimmy uh, Jones, Jaconda Krepas, Joshua Wiggins, Carla Graves, Kiera Bradley, Lorena Head Williams, Lona Kumar, Makimba Saki, Nia Johnson, Ogechi Megara, Pravin Chika, Rahul Shama, Remea, Rajid Singh, uh, of course Rita is also with us today, Shikira Austin, uh, Sandra Oyekere, Spencer Mitchell, and Taylor Wright. You are all welcome. Okay, so let us go ahead and get the session started. What I want you guys to do, uh, either pick up the, uh, the mic and tell me which question you want us to go through, or send me your choices through the chat window. Already I got question, okay, I got question 13. Somebody said all of them. Uh, it is impossible for us to do all of them given that we want to be out of here by by nine o'clock. Okay, somebody, yeah, go ahead. Okay, seventeen, fourteen, thirteen. Okay, good. Let's see the choices that you guys have here. Basically, almost all of them. Okay, well, let us start with uh, let us start with uh, thirteen. Since that was the first one that was uh, that was given. Okay, for question thirteen, which is this right here, uh, Hilton Osana, can you go ahead and read this question for us? Okay, uh, write structures and names that fit the following features. A, a cycloalkane that has only secondary carbons. B, an alkane with only primary and quaternary carbons. C, an alkane that only has six primary carbons and two quaternary carbons. Okay, very good, Tan. Thank you. Now, what this question, of course, is testing of is just whether you know what uh, uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary carbons are, and of, uh, also also testing uh, your knowledge of uh, the valence and octet rules, uh, making sure that when you write these structures, uh, you do obey all of those rules. Okay, so question 13. Write structures and names that fit the following features. The first one says a cycle cycloalkane that has only secondary carbons. 
cyclo, cyclo alkane that acts on the secondary carbon. Uh, this question here, you could actually give any kind of answer. Secondary carbon is that carbon that is attached to only two carbon atoms. You need to know that a secondary carbon is that carbon that is only attached to only two other carbon atoms. So in this case, you could actually give any cycloalkane. Also, it is assuming that you know what a cyclo cycloalkane is. This, for example, will be a cycloalkane. This is cyclo pentane. Okay. Does anybody have any uh, other idea as to which other cycloalkane will only have secondary carbon? Cyclobutane, exactly. So you guys got it. Any any cyclic uh, alkane uh, will do for this particular question. For example, it could be cyclopropane. Okay, all of these have only secondary carbon. It could be cyclobutane, just like you guys have already suggested. Any cyclic alkane will do for this particular question. Cyclohexane, for example, will also do. Each one of these carbon here is a secondary carbon atom because each one of these carbon is only attached to two other carbon atoms. Very good. How about the next one? An alkane with only primary and quaternary carbons. An alkane with only primary and quaternary carbons. Okay, once again, it is testing your knowledge of whether you know what a primary carbon is or whether you know what a quaternary carbon is. A primary carbon is that carbon atom that is only attached to one other carbon atom. On the other hand, a quaternary carbon is attached to four other carbon atoms. So somebody has given us an answer here. That's right. That's two methyl pentane. Would two dimethyl pentane? Would that work? Two two. Okay, that should be two two dimethyl pentane. Let us see. Would that work? Let us see. Two two dimethyl. Let us see. Say two two dimethyl. Uh, I don't think that will work. Okay, because if you say two two dimethyl, if you say two two dimethyl pentane, that would be this. Oh, you say two two dimethyl. Let me take that off. Two two dimethyl. Okay, let us see. Uh, uh, something tells me that will not work. 2, 2, dimethyl. Okay, 1, 2, 3. Take this off. So that will not work. Okay. Okay. That is 2, 2, dimethyl pentane. So that will not work. Uh, you want to try something else? Okay, somebody said, said 2, 2, dimethyl propane. Okay, let us try that. That sounds like my work. Let us see. 2, 2, dimethyl propane. That sounds like it might work. Keep in mind, what do we want? We want... A, I mean, an alkane that has only primary and quaternary carbon atoms. So this will work. This will work. This will work because let us take this off. This here, uh, okay, you have this metal here, metal, metal, metal. These are all primary carbons. And then you have 
this carbon here, which is attached to four other carbon. That is your quaternary carbon. Okay, so that is the answer. Okay, uh, do okay. I will do twelve also. Okay, I, I got it down twelve. Supposed to do twelve. Good. Okay, so so far so good. Now let us go to the next one, which is C. And take this off. Okay, an alkane that only has six primary carbons and two quaternary carbons. Okay, anybody knows what that would be? An alkane? Okay, somebody's trying here, Tiffany. Okay, 2233-tetramethylbutane. It sounds good to me. That sounds excellent to me. Let us see. Let us see whether that will work. 2233-tetramethylbutane. Hmm, that might work. 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, tetra, methyl butane, okay, so that is the butane, that is the base name, the parent name, that's the butane right here. And so you have 2, 2, 3, 3, tetra methyl butane. And what do we need? We need to have, for this molecule to have, six primary carbons. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is correct. And also 2 quaternary carbons and that is one and two. Okay, so in this all of this type of question here, you are, you simply need to uh, use uh, a little bit of uh, your knowledge of valence, uh, octet rule, of course the knowledge of what uh, a quaternary, tertiary, secondary and primary carbons are. Okay? And then a little bit of critical thinking to go along with it. <coughs> okay, so let us go to the, so we've done 12, we've done uh, 13. Somebody said we should do 12. <coughs> Somebody said we should do 12. Okay, 12. Okay, let me see here. Uh, Lona Kuma, can you go ahead and read 12 for us? Right, to condense or semi-condensed structure of a constitutional Isomer for each of the IUPAC names given in problem 11 above. Okay, very good. So what this question wants us to do is to write the condensed or semi-condensed structure of a constitutional isomer for each of the IUPAC names given in problem 11 above. This is problem 11. Okay. So now let us give the uh, give the uh, constitutional isomer for this, for this, for this, and this. Uh, before you can do that, you need to write the structure of each one of these molecules. So let us go ahead and write the structure. What does what is the structure for the first one? Two ethyl, four methyl hexane. Okay. <coughs> 2 ethyl 4 uh, methyl hexane. So the base name is hexane. So we have the base name is hexane. So we have this here. Uh, for the reason why I keep doing this, I want you to be aware that you do not want to have too many bonds on carbon. 
So I write the base name, then I begin to remove the hydrogen uh, in order to uh, to uh, uh, incorporate the uh, the substituent. So the, it says two ethyl. So we have ethyl in the two position. So I'll take a one hydrogen here. I place the ethyl here. Remember when we did this in class, this was one of those structures we told you that the the name they gave here is actually wrong. Okay, X. Okay, now uh, remember we told you that the name was actually wrong. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, then you have two ethyl, then four methyl, four methyl. That's one, two, three, four. So remove this. Okay, so that is the structure they have given us. That is the structure they have given us. Now, what they want us to do here is to write, to give a constitutional isomer of this molecule. So what would that be? What would that be? Let us, let us give this uh, molecule uh, the proper uh, uh, Numbering that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Actually, the base name for this molecule should be heptane. Heptane. Okay, so what would be an appropriate constitutional isomer for this? What would be an appropriate uh, constitutional isomer? What do you want to do? Keep in mind for constitutional isomer, what you have to do is just a different attachment of the, the atoms. So in this case, you could just write just about any other structure that is not this structure would do. OK, so for example, we could take, we could take this here, we could write this here as a constitutional isomer for this. So you have this. We have this. So instead of the metal be in the uh, in the four in the uh, three position, it could be right here. It could have a metal here. And then that means this now it be two, this here, here, and then this here is here. So that will be an acceptable uh, constitutional isomer. So what would be the name for this molecule here? Keep in mind the name must be different from this here. What would be the name of this one here? Anybody has an idea? What would be the name of this one? Keep in mind the longest carbon carbon chain will have to be one. Let us see one, two, three, four. Where okay, okay. Let us start from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So what would be the name? That is three, four, dimethyl heptane. Very good. Three, four, dimethyl heptane. Okay, that would be one of those uh, 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 constitutional isomers for this molecule. So, folks, you could write God knows how many constitutional isomers you could write here. So, I'm just going to leave this to your imagination. Okay, there is so many that you could actually write. Okay. Uh, okay. So let us leave this alone. Uh, about uh, about B, the same thing applies to B. You know, you write the structure. Take this out. Then 
the same thing for B. Okay, there is two for dimethyl ethane. Actually, that would be that would be an a constitutional isomer of this also. Okay, two for dimethyl ethane. To look at it, two for dimethyl ethane. Let's see. Methyl is here. The fourth position, methyl is here. And then we have, okay, that's five. That is six. And that is seven. Okay, and that is carbon one, two, three. Four, five, six, and seven. So, what would be an acceptable constitutional isomer for this? Any uh, acceptable constitutional isomer? Simply just move this methyl group. You could move the methyl group to here. In that case, you get three, four, which is the same thing as what we have here. So, this molecule is a constitutional isomer of this. Or, or two, three, yes. Just long, somebody is suggesting we move the metal here to here. So that becomes also a constitutional isomer. For example, you could do this. So th there is no limit to what you can do here. Keep in mind, constitutional isomer simply means that you have the attachment of the atoms are different, uh, however, the <coughs> These are different molecules with the same molecular formula. The only thing they will have in common is that the molecular formula is the same. That is five, six, and seven. Okay, so this would be two, this would be two, three, dimethyl, ethane. Okay, so these and these are constitutional isomers. And indeed, if you look at this also, this here is also a constitutional isomer of this because the, if you look at this, the molecular formula is the same. The only difference between all of these three molecules here is the attachment of the atom. Okay, so let us, somebody say we should do uh, 15. What does 15 look like? Fifteen. Okay, fifteen. Okay, so it's a fourteen and fifteen. Okay, very good. Okay, let us do that. Okay, uh, Alicia McKenzie, can you read the uh, fourteen for us? How many cycloalkane constitutional isomers does the formula C five H ten have? Okay, very good, and thank you. Okay, so this this question is asking how many cycloalkane constitutional isomers does the formula C five H ten have? Does anybody have an idea how many? This is a multiple choice question. Somebody said five. Great. That is actually correct. Okay. Can you okay, that is correct. Five is correct. Can you give me the names of this? Can you give me the names? That is correct. I will write the structure. Okay. No, five is correct. Five is correct, but give me the names. We keep in mind we want cycloalkane constitutional isomers. How do you figure that out? Okay, one somebody said one, two cyclopropane. One, two, okay, I would say one, two, dimethyl cyclopropane. Okay, that is one. One, two. One, two, dimethyl cyclopropane. That is one. That's a good one. Okay. Okay, then somebody said one methyl cyclobutane. Excellent. 
Excellent. One methyl cyclobutane. Keep in mind all of these must be cycloalkane. One methyl cyclobutane. Notice they must all have the same molecular formula. There's somebody said one three dimethyl cyclopropane. That would be the same as one two. Okay, somebody also said cyclopentane. Excellent. Now you guys are thinking. Okay, all of these are constitutional isomers. Notice the attachment of the atoms are different. The only thing they have in common is that they have the same molecular formula. Okay, so we have two more. We have two more. Keep trying. Keep thinking. You got to think critically now. One one dimethyl cyclopropane. Excellent. Excellent. One one dimethyl cyclopropane. Okay, that is what I want to hear. Okay, that is one one dimethyl. In other words, you have to think uh, critically here. Uh, because all they ask you to do is to simply give the constitutional isomers using this formula. So you could use any kind of arrangement of atom. Excellent. Okay, I see one ethyl, one ethyl cyclopropane. Okay, we don't need to put the one in there. So, but I get, I know exactly what you mean. Somebody also said we could do this ethyl cyclopropane. In which you have okay, okay. These are the five: one, two, three, four, five. And those are all the five constitutional isomers from this molecule. See, we already told you it must be a cycloalkane molecule. Okay, very good. That is excellent. Excellent. Now, well, you, you, the only way, the question is, how did I know that it has to be five? You have to write out all of the possibilities. Okay, that is the only way you know. You, ask, you want to write out all of the different possible attachments. Okay, once you exhaust all of the possibilities uh, in terms of attaching the the atoms in different ways, uh, arrangement of the atoms are different. Once we exhaust that, then you know that that is the maximum you are. In this case, it is five. Okay. Uh, about 15. 15. Somebody said 15. 15 is related to 14. Okay, so let me call on uh, uh, Brianna. Neil, can you go ahead and read 15 for us? How many cycloalkane isomers, including only, only constitutional and cis-trans isomers, does the formula C5H10 have? Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, this question says, how many cycloalkane isomers, it says, include only constitutional and cis-trans isomers, does the formula C5H10 have? It is the same formula that you have there. So does anybody know how many isomers, including constitutional and cis trans, that we should have using this formula? Anybody have an idea? Mm, okay, okay. Somebody said four, somebody said two. six is right. The correct answer is six. As somebody said six, that is correct. The correct answer is six. Okay, let me tell you why it is six. Now, keep in mind now, they want you to give the constitutional isomers and also the cis trans isomers. So right here, we have, what we have this here, one, two, three, okay, one, two, three, okay, no, let me take this out, okay. Three and four. Okay. Okay, we have those already. Now, the reason I say I want to take this out for now, you know, 
Can we write six trans isomers of this molecule? Yes or no? Give me a yes or no answer. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. We could write a cis trans isomer of this here because now we have two uh, substituents attached to the ring. So it is possible to have in, in one molecule to have a metric group going away from you, hydrogen coming at you, and on this side of the molecule we have a metric group coming at you and an hydrogen going away from you. So what name are we going to give this compound? Anybody know what the name of this compound will be? What will be the name of this compound? What will be the name of this compound? Okay. 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 Trans, exactly. Trans want to dimethyl propane. Exactly. This is trans one two dimethyl propane. Okay, so we could also add this. We could also add the cis. In which case, we now have methyl is here, and of course, hydrogen is here, and then we have the other methyl is also coming at you. And the hydrogen is going from you, away from you. So in this case, let me make this a little clearer. Okay, in this case, this becomes this one becomes cis one two dimethyl. Dimethyl cyclo. Oh, I'm sorry. This will be cyclo also. Cyclopropane. Cyclo. Propane. Okay. So now, how do we know it is six? Keep in mind that these two here, these two cis trans. They represent this, so we therefore take this out because those two now are represented by that one is now represented by this six times. So how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Keep in mind they say how many isomers? In this case, they say how many isomers, and they want you to include the constitutional isomers and the cis trans isomers. If you follow that, give me a happy face. Can okay, some okay. Go ahead and ask your question. I still okay, don't. Okay, the question. I still don't understand why. Okay, go ahead. I still don't get why it's cis and not trans. Like I don't get what separates the two. Okay, okay. Uh, look at this here. Let me let me write this molecule here. Okay, this is cyclohexane. Okay, cyclohexane. Think of it as it is a ring. Okay. Think, think about, think, uh, hold out your, your palm, okay? Hold your palm out in a flat, make it flat, okay? Okay, supposing I have something coming out from the bottom of your palm, 
and then I have something else coming out from the top of your palm, we will say that is trans. On the other hand, if those two objects are both coming out from the same side of your palm, say from the top of your palm, then we say those are cis. So that is why we say, in this case, if we have a metric group coming at you and another metric group coming at you, okay, these are coming at you on, on top, on one side of the ring, on one side of the ring. So therefore, we say these are cis. If, on the other hand, what you have is this, if what you have is this, you have one of the metal is coming at you on one side of the ring, and the other metal is going away from you, which is on the other side of the ring, then we, they say they are in opposite direction. So we call this trans. Okay, so that is how we go to uh, cis trans. Okay? Okay, so, but they can be going in different directions. Don't know. Okay, so now let us see what other question. Okay? Okay, well, anyway, so that is uh, this question here. Uh, so let us go to somebody say, so we've done 15. Somebody said we should do a 16. 16. What time do we have? We still have, uh, we have about 20. Okay. Do not worry about 16. I told you about confirmation. 16 and 17 we do not have to do. Not for this question. Not for this exam. Okay. Somebody said 7. Let me go back to 7. Seven. Okay, it says which of the following molecule has a net dipole moment? Okay, applause. Uh, which of the uh, uh, molecule has a net dipole moment? Okay, a uh, dipole moment essentially means uneven distribution, uneven distribution. Of electrons within a molecule, within a molecule. So, if we look at all of these molecules here, would you expect? Let me ask you, yes or no? Just give me yes or no. Would you expect this molecule here, which is an hydrogen molecule, this here? Would, would you expect that to have a dipole moment a, or a net dipole? No. No, because there is no, the, the even, this is a symmetrical molecule. The, the electron cloud will be evenly distributed. So that is out. How about uh, methane? Okay, you have met, methane molecule right here. If you have methane right here, okay, would you expect this molecule to have uneven distribution of electron. No, there will be no net dipole here. So this is out also. Now let us look at this here. Generally, whenever you have a symmetrical molecule, you should not expect any kind of net dipole. Would you expect this to have a net dipole? Would this have a net dipole? No, this would be because there is even distribution of electron within this molecule. Okay, so all of this will have no net dipole. Now, supposing we then give you this molecule here. Of course, this question also uh, presupposes that you, or you do, under, you do uh, know the structures of these molecules. If you have this nitrogen, which is okay. With nitrogen, we know we also have a pair of non-bonding electron on nitrogen, which is this here. So, would you expect this to have a net dipole? 
Okay, yes, because for one thing, for one thing, you have the nitrogen is little, uh, is, is, is little more little negative than hydrogen, pulling electron away from hydrogen to nitrogen, plus the fact that you have a pair of non bonding electrons here. So the direction of dipole will be in this direction here for this molecule. Okay? So the, the key point here is dipole, a net dipole means that the molecule has uneven distribution of electrons. Okay. Yes. As uh, somebody said uh, B does not uh, is that D does not uh, yeah, this is a special molecule. This we will discuss uh, sometime in the future. Okay, I, I, I see your question that it does not obey the object. It, yeah, it is something uh, they say special molecule that we will discuss in the future. Okay, somebody said we should do uh, what was that? They said we should do is it nine? I see a lot of nine. Okay, I see a lot of nine. Okay, somebody said we should do nine. A lot of people said we should do nine. Okay, now let me see here. Uh, Kiera, can you go ahead and read this for us? Nine. Write three additional resonance structures for the following molecule. Okay, very good, and thank you. Uh, so, so this question here, it is testing your knowledge of resonance. Uh, do you know what resonance is? Can you write resonance structure? Okay, the question is, write three additional resonance structures for the following molecule. BH3 is a symmetrical molecule, and it has no, non, uh, no, no pair of non-bonding electrons, unlike in uh, NH3. Okay. Okay, good. Now let us do this. <coughs> we have okay, so I could write a resonance structure. What I'm going to do, I am going to write keep in mind in resonance, what do we do? We are moving electrons. Supposing I decide keep in mind whenever you have this, you that means that you have a P orbital right here. You also have a p orbital right here, a p orbital right here, a p orbital right here. The same thing here, p orbital, Be because this essentially these are all sp2 hybridized uh, carbon. This is sp2 hybridized carbon, sp2 oxygen. The same thing here. So you could move electron within those p orbitals. So if I move this pair of electron, I use it to form a pi bond between this carbon and this. If you do that, you have to move this electron away from carbon. And then I could also now do this. OK, I do that. I could also move this. You notice I am moving a lot of electrons. You could only just move a couple of them, which I will come back later to show you. But if you do what I just done here, what do we have? We will have this. Keep track of everything that we've done. The double bond is here. Then we put a double bond here. And then the, the oxygen now is single bond. And now it has a pair of electrons. OK, extra. OK, the double bond that was here is still here. That is an acceptable resonance structure. Notice what, what have we done? We have simply moved this pair of electrons along all of this carbon, all of this carbon chain to oxygen. Okay, that is a good resonance structure. I could also do this. Take this out, take this out, take this out. I could also go in the other direction. Supposing I come in this direction, I form a double bond here. OK, I form a double bond here. And then this here, I remove this double bond. That could also be a resonance structure.
In this case, look at what we have done here. Keep in mind, in resonance, all you are doing is moving those pi electrons or sometimes non-bonding electrons. So now the double bond is here. Uh, the double bond is here. This double bond, we did not do anything to this. It's still here. And then this oxygen now also now has an extra pair of electrons. Notice the net, the net charge on this molecule is one negative charge. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. Okay? So that is also a possible resonance structure. Now, I could draw some simpler resonance structure. Supposing all I've done now, okay, supposing, let me see here, supposing all I've done here is simply move this to here, I move this to here, I could then move this electron to this carbon. Okay, in that case, I get another resonance structure. What do I have? I have this. Okay, so now what do I have? I have the double bond is now here. And now the electron is here, pair of electron is here. Nothing has changed here. And nothing changed here. Okay, notice that this molecule still retains that negative charge that they ask right at the beginning. Okay, so this is another possible resonance structure. Yet, okay, somebody is asking a question. Could we start by just moving the E from the electron from moving the electron from uh, could we start by just moving the electron from the pi? Oh, yes, okay, yes, 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 okay, we could do that. Yes, we could do that. Okay, so that is another possibility. All I'm simply showing you here is that all of the different possibilities. But somebody has suggested another possibility for us. Say, supposing we simply just do this. Make things easy for yourself, right? Okay, that is a possibility. That is a resonance structure. I could also have this. If I do that, nothing, nothing is changed here. That's the negative charge. Nothing has changed here. This is still here. And then what is going to happen, oxygen now will have this. OK, so negative charge will be on oxygen. That means that the carbon will now be positively charged. If you do that, you must place a positive charge on this carbon. Okay, and that is what we have here. Okay, so see, that is a possible resonance structure. Could you also just uh, uh, switch the places of the oxygen and the electron? Oxygen and the electron, I don't know what, what you mean by that. Uh, let me write this structure better so you can see this one better. Okay, nothing has changed here. Okay, this here, this here. Okay, so all I've done is simply just to write this. This is this one here. Okay, I switch the oxygen with the unpaired electrons. I don't know what you mean by switching oxygen. You cannot, in resonance, you cannot move the atom. You can only move electrons. Now, Supposing I do another one. Supposing I do another one here. I could simply just move this pi electron to here. I could just move this pi electron to here, right? Supposing I move this pi electron just to here, right? You could do that also. In that case, what do I get? I get this resonance structure.
Okay, so what have we done? Okay, this is still here, nothing has changed. So that is negative charge is still there. Now the double the pi the lead one is now here. That means now this carbon is positively charged and this double bond is still here and then the double bond oxygen is still there. Okay. Okay, so anyway, so all of the po these are all possibilities. Keep in mind the central feature of resonance is that you only move the pi electron or sometimes you move the non-bonding electron. That is all you need to do. Okay? And then when you do that, keep track of your formal charges. Okay, somebody said we should do number five. I think somebody wants us to do number five so bad. Okay. What is number five? Okay, I see. Okay, let us see here. Uh, did I call on Kiera? Jaconda uh, Kebas, go ahead and read the uh, five force. Draw an overall picture of the sp hybridized carbon atoms in a molecule that contains two carbon atoms and two hydrogen atoms. Okay, very good, and thank you. Okay, so now what they want you to do here, okay, we have uh, uh, nine more minutes to go. Okay, what they want us to do here, draw the orbital picture of the sp hybridized carbon atoms in a molecule that contains two carbon atoms and two hydrogen atoms. In other words, this is the molecule. Two carbon atoms and two hydrogen atoms. So it must be this molecule. It must be carbon that is uh, as a triple bond to itself. You have a carbon-carbon triple bond. Okay, so that is the molecule. So they want us to draw the orbital picture for this molecule. So that would be, now if I ask you this, what is the hybridization of each one of these carbon? We already told you, okay, we already told you that, so, okay. Forget that, we told you it's SP hybridized. Okay, in that case, so we have SP hybridized, we have this carbon here. Let us say it has the SP orbital here, SP orbital here, and then the other carbon, this here, also has an sp orbital, another sp orbital. Now, so these are the sp orbital. Between the two carbon atoms, they have formed a sigma bond in which, of course, you have two electrons here. Okay. <coughs> So you have one electron here, one electron here, and then this hydrogen here will be coming to form a bond with the sp uh, orbital, okay? So you have another electron there, so they're sharing those two. And then this other uh, hydrogen is here overlapping the s orbital of hydrogen overlapping which you now have another electron, so they share those two. So now what do we have left? Since we say that this carbon is sp hybridized, okay, so that means we have two additional orbitals here. So that means we have two additional orbitals here. So let us see here what we want to use for that. Okay, so we have a p orbital, and then another p orbital on that carbon. The same thing happens to this carbon here. We have a p orbital, and then we have another p orbital on this carbon. Okay, now what is going to now happen, of course, each one of these orbitals, p orbital here, has one electron each. 
What is now going to happen, there will be a side-to-side -side overlap of this P orbital. Keep in mind, in this uh, molecule here, you have two pi bonds. You have two pi bonds and one sigma bond. Okay, the sigma bond is this here. So now we're going to have a side-to-side -side overlap between this here, this P orbital here, okay, and and this other P orbital. And so that is now how you get your two pi bonds. Okay, so that is this is the orbital picture of this molecule. That is essentially what we want to, to draw. In other words, once you recognize that, the, of course, this is an sp hybridized carbon, you draw the sp orbitals, you get the direct overlap with, uh, with hydrogen, sp orbital, direct overlap with hydrogen. This is hydrogen here, hydrogen here. And then the remaining two p orbitals who have sideways overlap, and that is what gives your pi bond. Okay, so this is your pi, pi bond, and another pi bond. Okay, that is what they were ask, they asking you to do. Okay, somebody said, uh, "What is six? Did somebody say six? Uh, let us do one more before we leave, because I think it's nine or. No, 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 no. Six. We did six already. Uh, let us see. Say uh, eighteen. Let us see. Oh, eighteen. We did the we did the eighteen in class. Okay. So let us do, just do that, and then we call it a day because it is uh, three minutes to nine. I do want to respect all of your time, so we do we do this, and then we call it a day. Uh, Spencer Mitchell, can you go ahead and read this for us? Okay, okay, good. Okay, you said that we did 18 in class. I, I agree with you. You want us to do acid and base again? Okay, let us see. Uh, where's the acid and base? Let us see here. What number is that? Acid and base. Okay, this one, number 10. Okay, number 10. Okay. I think there's a consensus that we should do number 10. There are a lot more people say 10 than... Okay. Uh, okay, Spencer, Mitchell, can you go ahead and read this for number 10? Okay. But uh, uh, Ines, if I do go ahead and read this for us, I think Spencer is not ready. Um, acetic acid has a higher pK value than chloroacetic acid. A, what does this mean? B. Draw the conjugate base for each. C. Draw resonance structures for both conjugate bases and use bond priority to briefly explain the difference in pK values. Okay. Very good, and thank you. We also did this in class, so you may want to also check your, uh, the, uh, the uh, recording of the, uh, that particular class session. But since you guys want us to do it, we do it again. Okay, acetic acid has a higher pKa value than chloroacetic acid. What does this mean? Does anybody know what this means? No, this is the last one we are going to do because it is almost nine o'clock. Uh, what does this mean? Anybody? Chloroacetic acid is more acidic, exactly. In other words, this is more acidic. Okay, so that answer that that answers the uh, uh, the the, uh, a, uh, the question, the part A of that question. Okay, so about uh, draw the conjugate base. What would be the conjugate base of an acid? Does anybody know what the conjugate base of an acid will be?
More acidic than acidic acid. Yes, okay. Then, thank you. Acetic acid, okay. Does anybody know what uh, the conjugate base will be? Minus the hydrogen, exactly. So, therefore, the conjugate base of acetic acid, okay, this is for B here. The conjugate base will be when acetic acid loses. This is a proton to form a base. Uh, okay, so this is the conjugate base of acetic acid. And what will be the conjugate base of chloroacetic acid? Let me take this one off. Okay, that will be also this here. Okay, now the question is, because, okay, very good, you guys got that right. Now the question is, to use bond polarity to explain, to briefly explain why the PKA, the, uh, the, the PKA value for chloroacetic acid is less than the PKA value for acetic acid. In other words, to use bond polarity to explain why chloroacetic acid is a stronger acid than acetic acid. Now remember when we discussed this in class, we told you that the strength of an acid, I remember saying this specifically, strength of an acid depends on the stability on the stability of the conjugate base of the conjugate and then we also told you there are two processes that will stabilize a conjugate base we told you that you could stabilize a conjugate base by resonance you could stabilize by resonance. We also told you that you could stabilize a conjugate base by inductive effect. Okay, now the question I have for you. Which one of these here will stabilize, will be, will be in, in play with regard to these two molecules? Exactly, inductive effect. Inductive effect based on what? Which, where does that inductive effect come to? Okay, come to play. Okay, because of chlorine. Okay, exactly. Because chlorine here, if you look at the bond polarity between chlorine and carbon, chlorine is a lot more electronegative than carbon, so it is pulling electron away to in this direction. And so therefore, by pulling electron away in this direction, it is helping to stabilize this negative charge that is on oxygen. And that is what we refer to by inductive effect. So because of bond polarity and inductive effect, the conjugate base of chloroacetic acid is more stable than the conjugate base of acetic acid. And that is why chloroacetic acid is more acidic than acetic acid. So folks, uh, on, that, on that note, I think we have come to the end of today's presentation. But before we leave, let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead uh, and uh, give uh, recognition to all of you that are here. Somebody keep asking, what is the answer to four? Let me just go ahead and give you the answer to that, because we did that in class four. Uh, somebody really want us to give the answer to four. Oh, the the uh, oh, the answer to four. You have to determine the number of valence on this. So whoever this is, you need to come and see me tomorrow because we actually did this in class all, also. Okay. So anyway, we have come to the end of this session today. Let me go ahead and acknowledge all of you. I see Alfreda here, uh, Agnes is here, uh, Aja is here. 
I'm by Emerson Arusa, uh, Brianna Davis, Brianna uh, Davis, uh, Brianna Neal, Shivan Cummins, a lot of people here today, Christopher Robinson, Danica Lidu, Eli Rono, I believe, Giovanni Mogot, Glenn Brad, uh, Bradley, Gladly, Gosin Adejumo, Hilton Os Os Osana, uh, Alicia McKenzie, Ines Kifando, Jamil Jemison, Jenny Jones, Tinel Radri, Jaconda Capers, Joshua Wiggins, Jerry's, Kela Graves, Kiara Bradley, Lona Kumo, Makin Basaki, Nadira Muhammad, Ogechi, Ogechi, Magara, Pavin Cheka, Rahu Shema, Rajiv Singh, Remea, okay, of course Rita is here, Rudolph Brown, Ryan, uh, Ryan Jackson, Sine Aline, Sikira Hossin, Sandra Lekere, Santoria Manuel, Spencer Mitchell, Taylor Wright, Tiffany Fellow, and I think that is it. So I do want to thank all of you for being uh, here with us today, and I will see you tomorrow, so enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, for those of you who want to uh, stay for another five minutes, I'm going to turn the recorder off, and then if you want to ask me additional questions, you could stay on for additional five minutes. So until I see you tomorrow, so long.